our audiences. Mm -hmm. They want to know about, you know, the Shia Sunni division, where, you know, it was started. Okay. And you talked about, you know, schools of laws and talk. Yeah. Uh, maybe just if you... A bit more factual detail. And then, you know, I'm sure yeah. there will be lots of questions. Sure, I'll do that. Okay, all right. Well, of course, as you know, in the in the in the case of the um, the Shia Sunni division, it goes back to people and figures who are involved in the life of the Prophet Muhammad himself, right? So we're talking about his cousin um, Ali, and one of the early converts to Islam, possibly the earliest male convert to Islam. The question is whether it was a usurpation of his right. Um, when the other three caliphs, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman, took precedence over him? Or should it have been the case that the charisma of the family of Muhammad, biologically considered, should have remained within that family, meaning Ali should have been the first successor, uh, and there should have been an imamate, meaning a series of imams, whether 12, which is the more orthodox version, or seven. Um, and then within the, the Shiite division, within the marginalia of Shiite, Orthodoxy, there'll also be heretical groups, meaning splinter groups within that complex history. But you know, this would be the big division between what is called Sunni Islam. The important thing to remember here, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this very bitter struggle about political succession, is that it was essentially an issue about political succession in the beginning, and that the theological underpinnings grew up later, and in my view, were extra Quranic. Never forget that the Shiite uh, movement, the Shiite Ali, the partisans of Ali, was an Arab sectarian movement. I think a lot of people think of it as something to do with Iran, which of course is a very recent thing. I mean, I think you could date it to the Safavid dynasty. Would that be a fair point, Mr. Me? Last 400 years? It's more historical, uh, you know, when the country became uh, Shias, but the yeah, but I'm saying Iran. A lot of people in the popular imagination, yeah, of course the division goes back to the very founding figures of Islam, which is why I said that it's not to be compared with the with the Reformation, with the Catholic Protestant division, which is actually a very late one. I mean, it occurs almost 1600 years into the Christian history uh, and um, therefore is, is got, doesn't have a parallel to that. Now the question is about the events surrounding um, the uh, um, the way in which the Umayyad dynasty, the first dynasty, uh, de dealt with the Shiite uh, um, option, if you like. I think that Sunni orthodoxy recognizes that the people who were martyred in 680 were righteous and were true defenders of Islam. There's no question about that. And that Yazid, uh, sorry, Muawiyah and his son Yazid were not, in that sense, good Muslims. That question has been accepted, but since the Sunni orthodoxy wants to be eclectic and comprehensive, they are saying, let's defer this judgment to God, and for us we can happily say that there are four caliphs, beginning with Abu Bakr, Omar, Usman, and Ali, and give each of them their due. And then there are more sectarian Sunni writers who would make uh, more polemical accusations. They'd say, well, Ali was a very uh, righteous man, um, but perhaps he wasn't suited to leadership, uh, because as you know, uh, people who are righteous and god fearing are not always good politicians. Um, and perhaps, you know, there's an implied compliment in that. Um, so there's all sorts of things that people can, you know, in terms of the complexity of history. Another point that is sometimes made by Sunni uh, apologists and polemicists is that um, the rate of expansion of the Islamic empire actually dramatically re declined under Ali and the, its zenith, uh, its high point was other, under Omar. Uh, and uh, Osman, who was responsible for the codification of the Quran, not canonization by the way, codification. The Quran has not been canonized because it's self described as canonical. Another false parallel with Christianity, which of course has an apocrypha and a canon. Um, and under Osman, there was the development of the navy uh, and the conquest continued. So under Ali, it seems that there was so much sectarian strife between him and various prophetic companions of the Prophet, it became an internal you know, struggle between them. A lot of their energy was sapped. So instead of the external expansion of the Islamic um, Empire, instead you know, these Arab tribes and people, including Ali himself and the Prophet's uh, widow Aisha and others became involved in sectarian fitna or internal struggle. And so a lot of people, uh, Sunni apologists, have often said that it's a shame that the period of the four rightly guided caliphs should have consisted in which three of them were assassinated. I mean, what message does that give to non-Muslims? They say, well, so the Islamic